every once in a while, the weekly flashes a massive signal. Looks like we might have one of those in the making. <laughs> Welcome back to Crown's Clickbait Cave, also Crown's Quarantine Cave and Crown's Crypto Cave, all in one. It's a three in one deal right now, and I want to be wishing you well on this nice little Sunday morning over here from actually a bright and sunny Helsinki, Finland. Unfortunately, can't go outside because I just had surgery and my back is severely fucked up. In fact, I drastically, um, I drastically underestimated the pain that I would be in after this and how long it would take to recover. So I think I'll probably be taking it easy for at least another day right now. Uh, perhaps could change a little bit later. We'll see. We'll see how things go on. You never know. But uh, but I do want to say that Twitch probably won't happen today. Maybe it will, but probably not. Anyways. Um, uh, with all of that said, I want to talk about the crown trading application before we get into the actual analysis, because I do want to follow up on that opening statement, because there is actually some pretty massive things to be aware of. And uh, the crown chain application is showing once again, or actually, maybe I should show you where to get it, which is app.crowntrading.net, and it's free. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> anyways, the open interest essentially remaining flat from yesterday to today, even though Bitcoin's kind of floating in the mid to low uh, 6,000s, of which that's going to really tie into the analysis once again. And then more importantly, we also do see that Bitcoin dominance more or less steady here and the fear and greed index while it's at extremes actually did rise up just a little bit from yesterday to today other than that keep your eyes on this the open interest essentially remaining flat at 500 million essentially uh well essentially uh half a billion if i can stop saying essentially that'd be even better anyways apologies about that oh and before i forget i should also say that uh because of the quarantine because i've gotten a lot of requests for this um we are going to extend the uh the discounted period from the two <laughs> what, what was once the two-year anniversary of crown crypto cave this community is now going to be the current the fucking quarantine coronavirus uh discount right now which will extend until friday so uh so so no rush on that as always with all of the uh with all the programs make sure that they're applicable to you watch the videos that accompany them in the links below which i've actually fixed because i realized that they were broken before and uh the biggest thing from my end without getting like too deep into it because i don't want to spend too much time on this is make sure that you actually have, that you actually have enough time to invest into them there's three main programs one being the complete newbie program titled the neophytes initiation to trading and, and technical analysis that's a 10 hour long program so not that long but it's it's dedicated towards direct beginners so if you are already comfortable getting around exchange you know what the green and red button do you know the basis of technical analysis and more importantly risk and position management and you are already at some level consistently successful that program will not be applicable to you um, however, if that does sound like you, then hey, go ahead. Um, for the other two programs, the technical announce program, the options program, they are about 35 hours to 40 hours long and require a significant amount of time and financial investment. So as always, take advantage of the free content on this uh, on this channel first. I have TA 101 playlists, I have options 101 playlists, even videos from those programs in those playlists. Um, and uh, other than that, I think I'll get off that topic and get on to the actual analysis. So let's get into the charts right here. Again, keep in mind that open interest number, which by the way, we just skin it and it looks so beautiful i absolutely fucking love it um and we can go right on over here to the weekly so i want to start off with the weekly and very rarely do we get signals on the weekly of course and for good reason because it's a weekly it takes a long time for it to really populate itself and for, and even longer to play out but right now is one of those times now i need to go over the blx index for this uh for this example right now mostly because the blx index is going to show more long-term price action now we are off logarithmic scale right now which is more which is not really relevant to what we're talking about but i just want to show that this is this is what the actual chart fucking looks like anyways um anyways with regards to that, the big signal that I'm looking for coming into this next week of trading, or perhaps even better said, this next closure, which we're going to get uh, tonight at, I think, 8 p.m. Eastern time. It might be 7. Uh, I think that uh, America already had uh, changed their clocks. So I'm, 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 I'm unsure if the clocks change uh, on American times or European times on trading view, but I believe it is going to be 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, when the weekly closes and we have a pretty obvious uh, signal range going on right now does the weekly close above there's there's three situations which, which are likely to happen here or really just in general that we're that that we're concerned with the first situation is what is, is what we're showing right now where bitcoin's essentially above both and let me actually get rid of everything except for these two things or maybe even we'll leave on three for right now just to make this um as 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 clear as possible so First situation is what we're actually doing right now, where the weekly is currently trading above both the 200 exponential mean average, the 200 simple, and obviously the 377 as well. Uh, more more relevant towards long term, but. If Bitcoin can close above all these, uh, mostly the 200 exponential mean average and the 200 simple right here, 
which the highest one is currently at uh, about 5,900, we'll call it, um, then I would look for this next week of price action to probably fish back down into the 200 simple, very, very likely still, but I would probably also be looking to be a buyer on that retest of that region, maybe even below 5,000 as well in the upper $4,000 region. I don't have a strong opinion on that, but my strong opinion on, uh, or sorry, my strong opinion would be to be a buyer of any sort of a, uh, of any sort of a comeback into those regions especially this order block coming in back from uh, April 2019, of course. So I really do like that region. Um, if we do close above, my bias switches to maybe a little bit of a long-term accumulation, perhaps. Um, however, it is very important to one to first obviously say that it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but I am happy to share my uh, exactly what I'll be doing in these sorts of, uh, in these sorts of same situations. But make sure that I'm recording. I am recording and the microphone's working, so that's good. And uh, my camera number two, uh, accurately showing my bald, stop, my bald spot in the back of the head, it's great. It's it's even better when everyone fucking comments on, a, on, on it on YouTube. It's like, <laughs> what do you want YouTube for? To tell you about your, to tell you about your fucking face. Anyways, um, anyways, so as, as it is right now, of course, we are above both these areas, 5,900 being the critical component of that, because that's what, you know, confirms it essentially. Here's the thing though. Um, first off, CMEs did not close above that region. In fact, CMEs closed above, or CMEs closed at about fifty nine seventy five and had about a hundred dollars uh, premium on price action with regards to spot. So that means that spot was around about fifty eight fifty ish region during Friday's closure when CMEs closed. And typically, these things are going to line up when CMEs open later tonight, or probably be within the vicinity of each other. And looking at CMEs right here, this is not the picture of health and fitness on the way that they closed Friday um, before uh, before the weekend, of course. Now. Again, be very careful with this because if you just look at um, the right hand side over here on TradingView, it'll actually show the closure of CMEs at 6210. I believe it's just showing like the post market. The post markets are relevant for what we're looking at right now. We want to see where they actually closed during the actual trading period, which was again 5975. Uh, and there's a little bit of a premium on that price action with regards to spot. So that means that. It, it's it's not necessarily a done deal, even though we are about uh, five or four hundred bucks above um, uh, that critical point uh, right now that we're looking at on the weekly. So a lot of a lot of things can happen between now and the closure at again eight p.m. Eastern time. We'll look at probabilities in, uh, in a, a little bit later, but I need to delineate first the higher time frames and then mediate it with the lower term time frames, and then we'll bring that in. So what's option number two that could happen? Option number two that could happen is we close below both the two hundred extension moon average and the two hundred simple moon average, which the two hundred simple is coming in right around about fifty five fifty ish region. Essentially, the wick down that we got on Friday um, around closure. So if that were to happen, my immediate response would be to look for continuation over the next week or two to the downside, probably down to 4,200 ish region again, likely another bounce there, and then probably ultimately uh, all the way down to 3,500 ish region. I do not think that um, I do not think that we'd bottom at 4,200. I think that we'd probably bounce there, but I do think overall at the very least we'd test 3,500, and that's where the people who are calling for price action down to the $2,000 level or or, or even a $1,000 level, that's when they really start to have some some big things in their court once again uh, but for right now it's not necessarily there uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit of an oddball situation and then of course option number three door number three what could we walk through well if Bitcoin closes above the 200 simple which is about 5550 and below the 200 exponential average which is about 5900 anywhere in between that range which is actually where CMEs would have closed us on Friday uh, which again typically do line up as spot does like to, uh, spot typically does uh, uh, move in accordance with that um, pretty much almost always, um, then I wouldn't necessarily have a bias either which way. My bias would be towards another move at the very least to the downside of the $5,000 region. 5,100 would be extremely likely. Even 48, 4,900 would be quite likely. Um, and to the upside, I don't really have I don't really have an opinion there. I think that we'd probably retest the 200 exponential moon average, maybe even like 6,000 even. Um, but overall, I do think my, my strong opinion on that one would be that we come down to the low 5,000s. So this next weekly closure coming again tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time, it's really going to set the next like week or two worth of price action, which by the way, then sets in our monthly, which if we go over here to the monthly, the monthly is looking very interesting right now. The reason why I say that, if we could put on some, some major moving evidence here, that'd be good. Um, the reason why I say that is because if the monthly were to, for example, close where it is right now, 
pretty fucking good <laughs> pretty pretty fucking good if the monthly could close above 7300 extremely good extremely good and if bitcoin does close its next weekly above um above the 200 x benchmark average again coming today uh i do think that bitcoin's gonna have a chance to do that and that would really that would kind of really um set the foundation for uh perhaps perhaps another earth shattering move you know in the opposite direction but still got a long ways to go for that 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 at least take two weeks to really confirm for right now we're operating well below and also as you can see with our momentum monsters actually even with price action where it is right now would not do all that much for it uh monthly stoke still kind of nose diving here after rejecting the bullish control zone and monthly rsi is very concerning to myself as uh, we're kind of nose diving in this region i don't really see any real uh, uh, any real reason to stop before we kind of test the edge of the bearish control zone so if i had to call it right now i am bearish and i do think that bi that bitcoin will um will carry out some more downside here if i had to call it right now but again my opinion is irrelevant I'd rather just go off of, you know, very obvious areas, which the weekly is making very, 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 very easy for us right now. Very rarely do we get, you know, things this this lovingly, but uh, this is one of those times. Anyways, going down to a daily, going down to a daily um, is, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of things for consideration right here. Um, first and foremost, I want to show that, uh, of course, we have the death cross on the exponential moon averages between the green and the purple. It's 55 and the 200 right there. And all major moon averages do have a negative slope, except for the 10 simple, obviously, because it's, you know, it's the most reactive. But for right now, um, this, this creates a nice range for us in the, you know, essentially in the daily, uh, it's like for lack of a better term right now, um, between the yellow 21 exponential moon average and the red 10 simple. So once Bitcoin, um, sorry, once Bitcoin got the death cross, we said it was very likely to test one of the lower period moving averages, like the 10 simple or the 21. We got both, obviously. Now comes the next move of this sequence, which is going to be delineated once again by well, we can do this two ways, but more obviously by a break outside of the uh, outside of the 21 to the upside or below the 10 symbol to the downside. Funnily enough, both of them correlate with extremely important areas longer term, which we'll get into in a second as well right here. But before we get into that, there's also another way of doing this. If we look at, uh, I believe this was Friday. Um, yesterday was Saturday. Yeah, so Friday right here. Um, this long-legged doji total also gives us a very easy way to be managing trades going onwards and forwards um, for the next, uh, well, for the next move, essentially. Whichever way that we break above or below this area is very, 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 very likely to be the next direction. So if Bitcoin even trades below the low of this at 56.70, which, by the way, would be in between the 200 simple and 200 exponential moving average, I would, at the very least, look for a move back down to 5,100 and probably even as far as like 4850, 4900-ish region down here. I'd look for another move down to the low side of the range. By the same token, if Bitcoin Bitcoin trades above the high of this, which I don't think we should use stamp for because it's 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 a little bit of an outlier. It's at 7139, uh, for example, and you know GDAX is at about a little bit below 7,000. Uh, Mexico is a little bit is 6950, and uh, I'm curious what Finex is. Yeah, Finex is 6930. Uh, so they're all they're all a decent amount below 7,000. So I do think that uh, stamp is the uh, is the outlier here, and I'd actually more more likely use uh, Mexico or uh, or GDAX for this, or sorry, Coinbase. Um, at about 69.50-ish region, as long as we're below there, I would not be looking for continuation of the upside on the uh, medium and higher term timeframes. But that does mean that if we do take out the high side of this dildo, then I would look for extension actually quite a bit. I really don't see much stopping Bitcoin from at that point from about uh, realistically like 70, 7,400-ish region um, all the way up here. Uh, so we are looking at big bad moves relatively soon and even just waiting for the breakage of this guy right here is you know it's, it's still going to give you about a $500 maybe even maybe even a thousand dollar plus trade um, with a little bit of continuation on top of that so let's check out our momentum officers and see how they're doing right now we do see that daily stokes are actually headed north however what you are probably also noticing is that they're at the at, at the edge of the bearish control zone which is very 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 common to see some counter trend pressure around that region especially when you're in a heavy uh, trending um, territory uh, daily RSI do we have anything of, of interest here as well um, if we confirm this as a local high, which we have not done just yet, actually, uh, and really the only way to, well, we could do it two ways. We could either uh, trade below the low of this dildo, uh, again, about 56, 50-ish region, or if we closed like a four hour, maybe below, I mean, if we closed a four hour below like six, uh, fi uh, 59, 50, I think it would, I think it would obviously do it as well, um, which I think probably does happen actually. Uh, then, then we can, then we could likely confirm this as a local high. Um, and uh, and we would have hidden bearish divergence between this point and our last breakdown, a little bit above 8,000 right here. And that would likely be good enough to send us back down to basically like, we'll just call it $5,000 base. Um, 
um, which again, I, I do think is more likely to happen here. Um, and uh, and at that point, I would look for something something resembling divergence on daily RSI. Right now, we have no we have no bullish divergence on a daily or or higher time frame. And Bitcoin has never bottomed out on a macro scale, or even on like a major scale. Not even being like a macro market cycle low, but even just like a major low before one of those you know face melting pumps um, or dumps without without divergence on the daily and in this case it would be bullish divergence so we don't have bullish divergence as it stands on 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 any on any chart here and just to put this in perspective you know the last time that we had bullish divergence on a daily it, this was not a market cycle low obviously but this was a pretty nice uh major low uh precipitating about a four thousand dollar rally from 6500 to 10,500. So I do like that. Again, another triple driver right here before a $3,000 rally, obviously not a macro low, but but a major low. Uh, this one, a macro cycle low right on over here and three drives to the downside once again. We have plenty of examples in 2018, even throughout this whole downwards market and this massive descending triangle where uh, you know we, ha we have some pretty nice pumps uh, born off of these, uh, bo uh, born off these examples of um, bullish advertence on the daily RSI. And then if we go back a little bit further, to our last downwards market cycle, uh, we do see obviously bullish divergence coming on the last major low uh, right in over here, and a few and a, and a few price points in between on on some of these major lows, and as well as this guy right here on this major low, or also kind of kind of a, kind of a cycle low, and then this guy right in over here as well. So I just want to show that historically speaking, we've never bottomed out on Bitcoin uh, as far as the macro goes, and even on like a major low without bullish divergence on it uh, at the very least a daily. So I do think that Bitcoin has probably not seen the end of this move just yet. I think that Bitcoin most likely has lower to go, um, but I don't think that it has to be all that much, all, all that much lower. <laughs> to, to put in perspective, I do think that Bitcoin could pot, could, could tentatively bottom out like at forty two hundred or thirty five hundred. It's not going to be coming this week or the next week or the week after, the, or maybe the week after that. Uh, but I just want to say that you know we're we're talking about higher term time frames right now, so it's not you know it's this is not the shit that's happening today. <laughs> today is going to be more more so just like small ranges, I'd imagine. Well, maybe not so small, but. Uh, uh, well, we'll get into that in a second. Um, anyway, speaking about today, I actually do think that the very short term, the very short term is probably setting up for a for another retest a little bit higher, prob probably somewhere right around like 6,600-ish region. I wouldn't mind another test on the daily 21x benchmark average, but assuming that that gets rejected, that will be a damn good signal that uh, we're going to come back down and, and, and swipe those low 5,000s once again. Um, so I would be very cognizant of that. Also, what's majorly staring us in the face is, is the fucking cheat code of them all, which I... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't need to buy any of my programs. You, you just need to you just need to load, load up the twelve hour Stokes and uh, and, and put all my settings with them. And uh, if they start turning, I will get bearish on that. Just just basically based off of that. Um, but in the very 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 short term, I do think that Bitcoin is actually a little bit likely to have another hunt to the upside here. Um, the reason why I say that is because lower term time frame uh, oscillators are once again turning up. We do see that four hour Stokes are going to are are seeing a little bit of pressure to the upside here. But more importantly, we are testing this trend line coming. In all the way back from sorry uh, i guess more more so this guy right here um all coming in all the way back from uh what's it called uh uh 12th of march which has gotten a couple of our good lows uh along the way obviously 12th of march or sorry the first drive coming out on this low right here then this low right here and then once again coming in around this or, or tentatively this low right around here so i do think that we probably are going to see a little bit of a rally attempt from this region um and if we're just going from blue box to blue box i do think that uh, our next relevant blue box going to be between going to be between about 65.50 and 66.50 ish region right here here. So I do think that Bitcoin can make another another foray attempt into this region um, and, uh, and give a nice stab there, uh, you know, uh, take a lot of people out of their positions and then and then get one of those nasty hunts that goes the other way. Um, especially when we when we consider that uh, open interest is more or less flat over the last few days, while Bitcoin has been more or less going up, while volatility has been contracting and volume has been going down. Looking at our four right here, volume, volatility has been steadily contracting the whole way through. Volume has also been going down in a nice orderly fashion from left to right, as you know as you'd expect. So I do think that um, unless if you see open interest just absolutely spike up like another hundred million, maybe two, maybe even two hundred million, um, and Bitcoin breaks above, let's call it like. 60 let's call it 6700 just to just be even more conservative with this one 
um, then I would be very defensive against a move like that. Um, and it's also, and, 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 and like I said, we do have a very natural, well, not we, but I do think that there's a very natural way of kind of managing this uh, area right in over here to begin with, just with a wick high that we saw on um, on the 20th of March, which again, Bitstamp, the outlier, other exchanges showing more so around like 69.50-ish region, which I do think is uh, is more accurate. Um, so yeah, you know, if I had to kind of sh summarize my thoughts in the lower term timeframes, probably are going to get another another move up here. Um, but I would be very, 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 very skeptical that it actually turns into a rejection. Looking at the three hour time frame, we do see that same sort of trend line, which is actually a little bit more efficacious on the three hour. We see it coming in, coming in all the way back from over here, in fact. It doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be kind of like a regression, which you can see more or less works. And what's up, Peter B? Good to meet you, man. Welcome to the cave. It's a pleasure to have you here, man. Um, anyways, uh, anyways, bouncing off this trend line once again, which has been holding up a lot of lows since actually the 8th of March, by the way. Getting this bounce right here. Obviously, these bounces do fail, but it gets, you know, these are nice moves nonetheless. I mean, 500 to $1,000. Uh, this one, like 70, 75 all the way to at the height, 82. Not bad. $700 move. Um, uh, gets this gets this low right here. Obviously, same thing as a four hour gets this low right here. Another another phenomenal one, and then more and then more recently, uh, once again testing this trend line somewhere in this region right here. So I do think that very 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 short term Bitcoin actually likely does test test the upside once again. Tentatively speaking, somewhere between about sixty five fifty to sixty six fifty ish region. But assuming that we get another rejection right there, which it, I make an assumption to be fair, I'm or not to be fair, but like need to be very, very vocal about this, making a massive assumption here. Um, assuming that Bitcoin does get a, uh, a rejection right here, be careful, be, uh, be very, very careful because there are some signs of trappy trap behavior going on right now. And if we start to, and if we do get a rejection there on the lower term timeframes, you can imagine that's going to carry on over into the 12 hour, which is going to then turn down and we are going to, well, huh, should I do it like this? Kind of do have another competing trend line forming right around here, by the way. <laughs> It's also worth mentioning that I think really what we're doing on the 12 hour is something like this. It's something like this. This has caught all of our lows, by the way, since uh, since since beginning of February, like major lows, obviously not macro lows, but major lows. And uh, we do have a competing trend line coming in right around here. So again, close enough is close enough. So if we do start to see some downside pressure, uh, that's probably gonna be good enough for me um, to look for this price action to, well, you already know where I'm going with that. Uh, I also wanna talk about the uh, the two day and the three day really, really quickly. Um, two day is gonna have a death cross relatively soon, assuming that Bitcoin uh, assuming that Bitcoin stays below about 7,000 uh, bucks, it will inevitably get the death cross uh, probably in the next tick or two, which we are getting the next tick today, or sorry, I should say later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, or sorry, it's, I'm still, it's still like stuck in my mind, 8 p.m. Eastern time, need to, need to make that adjustment. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and the longer that we're below 7,000, just the, the, the sooner that we're going to get that death cross again between the green and the purple. And historically speaking, let's actually go through this one just really, really briefly. Or actually, I do want to leave some of these on because this could be quite, quite fun to do. Okay, so we'll leave we'll leave we'll leave four of these moving averages on. I want to put the focus though on the green 55 and the purple 200. I don't know if I have the 55 or the or the 50 on there, but it's basically the same thing. Um, anyways, uh, anytime that anytime that we get this cross, even if it is kind of far away from price action, um, during a phase of consolidation. More importantly, speaking though, that is. That is usually going to get some continuation, at it, you know, in the same direction as that. For example, right here, the golden cross the upside during this consolidation phase. It spends some time consolidating, obviously, but eventually does get that next blast to the upside. Um, especially as long as it is, and it is trending as long as it is above the 21 exponential moving average. By the way, the yellow moving average right here. You can see over here when it breaks it, funds over essentially. Uh, back on over here. Back one over here gets gets a death cross um, on the two day uh, in September 2018, and that's when things really started to get a lot more realistic for breaking to the downside. It, at least at least when we uh, when uh, when we were doing um, videos on this, uh, uh, sorry during this time period, that's when that's that's when it was like okay, not only do we have all these bearish things going on uh, as far as the macro picture goes, but now it's actually an actionable trade. It's becoming becoming more and more relevant. So we get the death cross right here, and there's no opens and closes on a two-day total time frame until until and well and, and until we basically put the loan right on over here um so uh, so perhaps it's better to be said not just looking for closures above the 21 exponential moving average but an open and close which is going to be more more relevant essentially um so yes you know same thing going on over here and this was a 50 percent move of course you know from top to bottom we're talking about a 50 percent move i mean i think even over here to the upside it probably even was maybe close to that as well 
Um, uh, well, actually, it's like a 2x, but that's to the upside. It doesn't really count. <laughs> doesn't count. Doesn't count. Fuck them. Uh, let's go back a little bit further than that um to our last uh, our last death cross coming in right in over here gets a death cross right here retests the 55 right here and then destruction after that going all the way from top to bottom another 60 60 percent um but let's even just take it from the fr um, from the next break of the 21 so so uh so so again we get the death cross right here and breaks above the 21 initially then comes back down and let's just take it from the next breakdown of the 21 it's about 50 uh, on the upper end of the 50 percent uh, region then other than that we don't really have any other death crosses on this time frame unfortunately to uh to analysis size but more importantly the picture that i'm painting right now is that yes while bitcoin is probably even likely to test back up to the 10 simple right here which is 66.50 by the way as long as we're living below this area and especially below the 21 exponential mean average this is well the you know the buys from this time frame would be bearish would, would be to the downside and we do see that the uh, that the 55 and the 200 are on an inevitable crash course as long as bitcoin's below 7,000, it's going to happen this week um uh pro not on this next tick but it's very likely on the next tick again as long as bitcoin is below 7000 which the last wick high that we see right here is coming in about 69 50ish region so if we come up with a with a way of looking for continuation from that we can say that as long as we're below that region or at least i can say that as long as we're below that region i am still biased to the downside that also creates a pretty massive range to the upside that we could test but i would look at that as an opportunity to get into a position uh, in the opposite direction essentially um it with, with a very natural stop loss at you know at that area um so yeah and of course all major movement efforts here have a negative uh, negative slope as well which is really when things do start to get nasty right here and of course amazing to the upside right here and again back to the downside right in over here um, that's when things actually are quite nasty. So uh, if we look at momentum oscillators as well, you know, is, is there anything else of note here? Um, no, no, no bullish evidence to be found. We do have two days, uh, two days dose turning up, but I don't really care actually too much about that. Funnily enough, um, uh, to me, this is kind of a retest of, of historical areas um, from this time frame's perspective. Uh, anyways, we don't need to go into that to get the next piece of price action. Let's go over to the three day as well. Or sorry, there was something on the three seven seven that I want to look at. Was it the two day or the three day? No, yeah, it was a three day. So yesterday, yesterday night, we closed a three day dildo, and it was this guy right here, and this guy right here again. This was a pretty impressive dildo at you know at its height, about thirty eight percent to the upside, but on a closing basis. So when the bots and algos are are essentially programmed to close this price action at for the market movers, um, they wanted it all the way down here giving you just about 16, 17% of that initial 37, 38% dildo, which is not fucking good. Giving up more than half of your rally almost immediately is not the most bullish thing of all time. Just like just like um, uh, buying up, you know, most of your dump almost immediately right in over here is not the most bearish thing. That's why we were saying, hey, it's likely to bounce in this region, but it might not be, it might not be done just yet, but at least for right now, it's likely to bounce. Um, so same thing, same sort of thing goes on right in over here. And, you know, could we pop back up and maybe test around the 10 simple again or, or 66.50 again, um, but still close below the, the 377 here long term? Yeah, could, uh, it could very well happen. And let's just see what, historically speaking, that 377 exponential mean average has meant for Bitcoin's price action. Now, historically speaking, it's actually, well, we could go to the BLX index here. Okay, yeah, this is actually really, really good. So, uh, historically speaking, any time that Bitcoin is below the three seven seven on the on the uh, on the three day, we are in we are in kind of like the end portion of that bear market. Now, the end portion can obviously take you know in in this case a year right here, but it gives us actually a nice accumulation range uh, more or less. And you do see that um, you know once Bitcoin starts opening and closing three day deals back above this region right and over here, it's glory times. Just like when we close below. You know, it's 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 in an accumulation range, but it's also coming off of like a, literally a fucking seventy five percent down. Um, same thing over here in uh, in 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 late twenty eighteen, early twenty nineteen. Bitcoin breaks a three seven seven on the three day, gets a death cross at the same time. By the way, looks a little bit familiar right in over here. We create a nice range. You know, it doesn't really go that much lower to be fair. You know, especially if you're looking at a log scale, which is kind of which is kind of disingenuous, but you get my point. Um, but once we break back above glory times once again so bitcoin over here retesting this region very 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 quickly um 
uh, it's given us two things. You know, if, if we reject from it again, I do think that Bitcoin's going to come back down to the low side of the range. And we're going to do something like what we've done the last couple of times. And at the very least range between upper 4,000s and, and low mid to low 5,000s for a little bit of time and probably do stab lower overall. But if Bitcoin also could start opening and closing three digits above this region, long term could be uh, would 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 look a lot better and probably probably push us back up to the uh, to the mid 7,000s. And that's when things start to look a lot more rosy. So that'd be quite nice. Uh, by the way, that was BLX index. This is uh, this is Stamp. I had to go to BLX to get that uh, to get that ex extra piece of price action. But you can see on Stamp, it's actually a little bit nastier because we did actually confirm a close below the 377 yesterday night. Um, so, I, you know, again, I, I do want to be on the record as saying that I do think that Bitcoin uh, comes back down um, below 6,000 again. I think that it pre probably even comes to the low 5,000s again, even if it even if it is, uh, even if this weekly does close above the 200 uh, exponential mean average at 5,900, I still think even mid 5,000 is quite likely and, and, and low 5,000s is, is still a little bit likely. We could spend some time just offsetting in this area right here, even if it even if the low is in and then uh, later on uh, move to the upside. Okay, cool. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, Jesus Christ, man, this video has already been 30 minutes long and there is still a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a long video. I'll, I'll, I'll warn you right now once you're already 30 minutes in, which most people have already ticked off. Um, anyways, uh, let's go check out the trolling bands. What are the trolling bands looking like? We have a rejection on the median trolling band off that last rally. To me, that that shows that we're probably going to come back down and test around one of the lower period moving averages, probably around 10 simple, which is 5,700. Again, have to really think about where that forces the uh, the daily. Um, daily momentum also, we already looked at that. We already looked at 12 hour. Um, let's go down to the lower term time frames now. <clears throat> I didn't do too much work on this, but uh, but let's go back down down around here. Let's go back to actually BitMexico for this one. Um, I do. I also do kind of have this drawn out as a potential bear flag. We can we can discuss that idea in a little bit. Um, but uh, but here but but, uh, but here we do have or sorry no maybe we maybe we do want to use this chart. Yeah, this this chart is going to be easier. Um, so now let's now let's look at some probability ranges. So, hmm, do we want to be using this area? Where where is the chart that I was using? Yeah, it's this one right here. Okay, all right, cool. We'll use this one. I I, I won't do like the more preliminary resistance, but there, you know, of course, of course, as we showed yesterday, this the, uh, this area right here is still very much relevant. I just think that what is more relevant, especially as we close a weekly today, is going to be this region right here and this region right here. Okay, so. If we do close a four-hour dildo, and I said yesterday 61.50, uh, if you're if you're more aggressive and if you're more conservative, 60.50. I think I think this we did get a close like at 60, a little bit above 6100. Um, so you know we can probably move that down just a little bit and tighten this up, and really it should be more accurately shown like this. And then we could look at this guy right here to the upside. If we do break about uh, break back above 66.50, and especially close like a four-hour dildo above there, um, I would look for a retest of the prior high, and at that point we're going to have a legitimate chance to trade above the prior high, which would initiate uh, a move likely back into like 7,400. So uh, while I don't think that that's very likely right now, um, I think it's important to talk about all the different situations. By the same token, uh, a move to the downside with a four hour closure below this, below the 6,100 to 6050 ish region, right? Uh, 6050 ish region, to say that properly, right here, I would look for extension all the way down to at the very least 5,700. Um, and, uh, uh, or sorry, anywhere between about 58 and 5,700, probably a small bounce there and then continuation to the lowest side of the range overall. So let's go to our probability chart and see what uh, this is populating right now with those critical targets in mind. Let me uh, go to my inputs by the way it's been updated once again Bali taking an absolute absolute drastic uh, 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 care of his work which I absolutely love anyways um, so we'll do some single-sided uh, probabilities here to the upside we'll do that once first we'll do the more uh, the more conservative area at 6650 and let's see what the probability of us closing above that region is okay so sorry uh, target price range. Okay, so yeah, six six fifty. Okay, great. All right, so uh, above sixty six fifty, which would initiate that next move up, probably back to sixty, like to, to retest our prior high, and at that point we could get that continuation above our prior high at sixty nine fifty ish region, which would initiate that next move towards really realistically like seventy three to seventy four hundred. So that's kind of a big trade right there. Um, that is a less uh, or around a twenty four percent chance to happen um, in this next twelve hours closures, which is three hours and thirty six minutes. So probably not very likely right now. Um, below Low there, seventy six percent, obviously, just the difference between those. But let's look at the let's look at the bottom side. Let's look at the bottom side, which I will say is sixty one hundred, um, and let's see what the probability of this is. I'd imagine it's probably going to be a lot more. Okay, <clears throat> so 
below 6100 36% chance that we actually do close below there in this next 12 hour delta closure again three hours and 35 minutes which is also going to be the next four hour closure as well by the way so is it more likely that we go to the upside or the downside well obviously the downside right here um even though i, I don't really think that this move like happens right now i think it's i think it's going to happen like probably sometime this week um and uh and then of course let's actually look at what the, like what the um let's look at the daily range let's look at the daily range so again let's go to, let's go to a chart that actually represents a little bit better and we'll take the high of this guy at about 69.50 and the low of this guy at about 60 or sorry 56.50 so um we'll do 69.50 right here let's see what it what is the probability that we do this on the daily on the daily so now we're looking at the daily close which by the way look at the look at the rings they have flattened out once again after being slightly uh slightly moving to the upside but two doji doodles in a row it's a lot of indecision right there and printing another one as it is right now um this one would show that we do have a less than a little bit less than 16 percent chance to close above uh that's that critical 69.50 ish region a lot you know a lot more likely a lot more likely uh below there but this is only for, you know for the next days uh worth price action and to the downside the critical area that we can see 65650 um is gonna be let's see also also about equal probability a little bit less than 16 percent chance here as well um so as the you know as the rings on this start to once again uh, signal a change they're slightly angled to the downside right now i would say that that does angle it a little bit more um in that direction so i you know i actually do think that uh, i actually do think that's that that's more likely even though they're kind of equally as likely as each other both getting both bo uh, both the actual area uh, at the top side of the first innovation and the downside of the first innovation funnily enough now you will also notice that the second innovation is exactly where uh is exactly where our last few closing bases were at about 50 50 to 5100 region which is where i think bitcoin's going to likely come back down to especially if we get another rejection right here and to the upside um into the upside well well, our second standard deviation is actually all the way at 7,600, uh, although I'd imagine our, our one and a half would be at that 73-ish number. So so we'll get to that one. Again, I don't think that that happens today, so it's going to be more or less irrelevant for right now, but keep an eye on that as the days uh, transgress. Um, also, another big thing from the macro picture that I want to put the uh, that I want to put the focus on. Uh, oh, fuck, it's not there. Um, let's let's put back let's put let's put on the hash ribbons we haven't spoken about this in a while although um well mostly because there just wasn't really much to look at but uh, the hash ribbons have actually signaled a a sell once again now every time that these have turned red well let's just look at it let's just look at it so uh the last the last time that i re actually really remember was uh, october 2018. That was a break of 6,000 down to 3,000. Remember, and also remember the two day uh, death cross, by the way, kind of in the same region as well. Um, more recently, we had this breakdown right here before this this move all the way from 85 to, uh, we see it right here, from about 80, sorry, 86. Hey, from 86 down to at the, at the bottom about 64, 6,500, so about a 30% move. Um, this one over here, probably more like 50% move, I'd imagine something like this. Yeah, about 50% to the T. Um, before that, we had a few examples right in over here. Sorry, let me zoom in on it. Um, we have this example right here. Uh, before before this major move down, uh, this was this was in the context of a general uptrend. By the way, this one uh, this one was another thirty percent downwards move, um, and then a couple of examples in twenty fourteen and twenty fifteen right here, where and also and also one back in twenty fifteen right here. Um, but let's zero in on these two guys as well. These weren't these ones weren't as obvious, not as um, as uh, as nasty, but still nice moves to the down. Actually, this pretty fucking nasty right here and remember there's a two-day death cross at this time as well this one about 60 percent down and then we had this one over here which would have been a phenomenally bad signal actually um this this one obviously did not give any real real edge even if we give it a more yeah e you know even if we make some excuses for it really not not all that much i mean at most at most and this is like complete fucking hindsight on trading but uh but 12 percent, and i wouldn't even say that i'd, I'd say i'd say it's more or less a bad signal um but on the whole on the whole there are more good signals here than not and you can you know you can go back all the way on over here and we do have a few more examples which uh you can you're more than welcome to look at yourself so just another thing in line with that two-day total death cross that i think is concerning and does make me a little bit more angle to the downside at the very least for a retest back down to the mid to low five thousands and we'll kind of pick it up from there and and, and see um 
oh my god man this video is already 40 minutes long okay all right cool um 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 oh do i want to bring up that fuck should i bring up that uh yeah we'll bring this up all right at least i at least if i do all the work on this video then i can point people towards it and i don't have to go over it uh a million fucking times <laughs> anyways uh whoops not the one that i wanted to look at mm, maybe is it there is it there mm. Now nah, we won't go over right now. That's that's too much. Too too much in one video. Um, what else can we do? Um um um. I want to. Uh, do I want to look at probabilities between traditional markets and uh, or sorry, correlation between traditional markets and Bitcoin right now? Maybe maybe not. Mm, we can go check it out right now, really really quick. Okay, so Bali has actually gone ahead and done uh, uh, in line with his uh, with his new uh, with with Pig. His name is Pig, <laughs> the Pig, the Pig, the Pig, the Pig, the Kid, and he's fucking he's he's a goddamn genius apparently. Um, and they've actually gone through and uh, and 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 done even more drastic measures with all these correlation um, uh, indicators. So the big thing here is, is that we can now look at uh, what, what we're going to call the pig, the pig CC, which is actually a better version of the CC because the way that TradingView calculated it is not exact without getting like too deep into like how they calculate it. It's just to put it bluntly, they just don't really do it all that right. Um, this is going to be more correct. Um, and then also uh, he lovingly put in a confidence interval on it. And then if you're familiar with like statistics, you can anytime you're looking at a confidence interval, you also want to be knowing the P values. And essentially, whenever this area down here is green, that's telling you that the P value is less than five, which means that essentially the data fits and this is not an outlier and this is like par for the course. And you can essentially generalize a statement to the to the greater sample. Um, so as you can see right here, we are extremely extremely correlated. We are actually at a 0 0.914 on a daily, by the way. And R squared is, is is decently high. It's it's not it's not as high as it's ever been, but it's decently high at not 0.47. That's showing you that quite a bit of this does fit. Um, in, you know, in comparison, if we were to if we were to draw a correlation between this and like um, gold, for example, the R squared is going to be like not point. It's not it's not even not 0.1. It's not point not one one. You know, it's it's very 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 low. Whoops, wrong one. Let me go back on over here. Or actually, even BLX index can be better. Anyways, p value showing that this is uh, th uh, that this that this is efficacious, that this is good. Plus r squared being this high uh, in perspective is very 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 interesting as it would essentially confirm that it is not an outlier that we are seeing correlations with traditional markets and Bitcoin at this time, especially for the last major move to the downside. So when we're talking about the macro, they do seem to be pretty damn correlated. Anytime that we see a major move both to the upside or the downside in Bitcoin, that's when we see the correlation between these two actually strengthen funnily enough. And that's when, that's when like the easiest um, uh, trades between the two, if you, I mean, if, if you're like, if you are actually looking at a hedge between the two, which is just fucking silly to begin with um as you should probably just be hedging like on asset that's what futures are for that's what options are for like why do people make this more difficult than it needs to be i have no idea but more importantly on the macro and on the big pivot points they are incredibly incredibly fucking correlated and you can see i mean just for example like the last major high at twenty thousand for bitcoin you know how how high was our correlation coefficient our pig how high was our pig about uh even a little bit higher than where we are right now it's damn close to one and that is green as fuck that is green as that is green as the devil's lettuce um <laughs> not only that but if we want to take this another step further for the macro let's actually go to a monthly here and Let's zoom this out a little bit. Um, so I've gone ahead and, or sorry. Uh, also, what's new here is we're looking at the uh, we're, we're, uh, we're looking at the beta value for this uh, beta weighting essentially, which is how do I explain this one? It's essentially like equating for returns between the two, which is less important because I, I don't really think too many people like trading these two against each other, which again, I just trade the fucking, just trade the derivatives of that asset against each other. Like that's gonna wake, make way more sense and be a lot easier on the soul. But what's interesting here is that when the beta wane of this is really, really similar between the two, when they're both essentially meeting this trend line, that is that is correlated with incredibly strong pivots on the markets, uh, sorry, on, on, both, on both of these markets on the macro scale on the macro scale. So let me explain. Whenever we hit this trend line, we are putting either major highs or major lows. This one coming in from here, that's your that's your 2015 low. This one coming in over here, that's your 20 uh, that's your 27 that's, that's 20,000 high in Bitcoin. Both major highs right here. Uh, this high right here, 
you know, right before Bitcoin breaks down 50%, right before SPY breaks down, uh, that, uh, that was uh, end of 2018. So SPY was going from like 280 or 290 to 220. It was, it was a pretty big move. Um, and then more recently, what do you know? You know, they're both kind of in line. You can see that this is once again sprucing up. I want to see it hit that trend line. And that is when I do think that we will likely see a macro low put in. Um, and as you can see, it's going to take a little bit of time. We are getting a new monthly soon uh, in less than a week now, as uh, we are going to be getting to the end of the March. Uh, or sorry, or, or let me see. When is end of March? It's this next week. No, actually, it's, it's, it's a week after that. Okay, fair enough. So got a little bit of time. Um, still got a little bit of time, to be fair. Uh, but... At when when this area touches this area, I would look for. I would say that we are either at the low or we're so damn close to the low that I would just be interested in prob probably you know accumulating long term. Um, again, not financial advisor, not a financial advisor, but I do think that that's quite interesting. Um, anyways, uh, you can see that the R squared on these on these two on the monthly is pretty damn high. Although the pig CC, uh, the pig, the pig, uh, right now is funnily enough not that high, not that high on the monthly. Um, at, uh, ever since essentially, I mean, it's it's not 0.35. It's 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 obviously positively correlated, but not like super positively correlated. Um, this started to change a little bit drastically in April or sorry, August 2019. Um, so about half a year ago. Uh, started to change around. Other than that, it was pretty damn strongly correlated the whole way through, except for one of these major pivots down here. But you can see that the p-values is telling you that that's an outlier, actually. It doesn't fit the data. Um, and uh, and right on over here, you can see that this is pretty damn efficacious. So for the majority of the history, it's been pretty damn good. And what do you know, when they are at, when, when we actually see the, the correlation coefficient, the pig go down right here, it, the p-value is no is 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 no longer relevant. It's telling you that this is an outlier once again. So all this right here, when we see a correlation between about basically on, on the monthly like 0.9, and uh, and all the way up till we were about 0.6, um, this 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 all fits the data and, and back one over here as well. Looks really really good. Um, other than that. Uh, you know, it's 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 basically it's basically telling you that 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 is par for the course. Um, I'm now I'm not saying that things can't un can't can't decouple it de can't decouple and uncorrelate in the future. Of course, they can, and they probably will if enough time passes. Um, but this probably takes time, and and realistically, I think when it comes to the conversation of correlations, people. And, and I'm not saying this in like condescending anyway, but people don't really understand what correlation means and the, and the difference between correlation co covariance, like your regression analysis and 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 beta wane for for example as well. Um, correlation is just is just speaking towards like the direction of both those assets. Most what most people are talking about when they're arguing what they think is correlation is covariance. They're saying like, okay, so spy went on this exact day, you know, down five percent and then Bitcoin went up ten percent. So they're not correlated and go fuck yourself. Uh no, that's that has to do with covariance. Or Jesus Christ, I saw Pomp do this the other day too. He's like, uh show me he, he showed a chart of Bitcoin and said like over here, you know, during this price period we went like hundred percent or Bitcoin went hundred percent. It's like it's funny you start using the term we and you take on the identity of the asset and um and and, and of course you know that's that's dising that's that has nothing to do with correlation the correlation is that both of them are going up the covariance is how much is one going up in relationship to the other uh, to the other one or right, well, it's also kind of like beta wane as well because it's talking about your returns for you know it's, it's correlating the returns essentially um but 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 when it comes down to covariance, that's what they're kind of arguing. It's, I think that's what I think that's what a lot of people think they're arguing. It's like, okay, if Bitcoin went up 100%, then that means that spies go up 100% as well. No, that's not it at all. That's that's not what you're looking for. Correlation speaks towards like the the general direction. Um, so if you're negatively correlated, that's what you really want on a hedge. You want negative correlation. So if you are like long one Bitcoin and short the equal amount on spy, then then that would make sense as a hedge. But at the out, I mean, at the outset, again, I just don't see the value in doing something like that. That's why futures were created, so you can trade, you know, against that asset on that asset, and it's going to obviously have a direct correlation with each other. Like if you look at a Bitcoin, if you look at Bitcoin spot and Bitcoin futures, directly correlated with each other. So if you, you know, if if you want to, uh, if you want to hedge, that's probably the better way of doing it. I mean, this is really only relevant for people who have like a massive portfolio for people just arguing bullshit on Twitter. It doesn't really mean all that much. And of course, we've gone over this a million goddamn times. Maybe uh, maybe my creative designer can cut that price. Uh, sorry, cut that piece up and we can add that on to the, the nice little Twitter thread um, explaining uh, ex explaining the difference there. Anyways. Um, OK, so I think I got the main points out of the way for Bitcoin. Uh, let's go check out some of the other market leaders, see how they're doing it right now. 
and um and then we can then we can wrap this bitch up uh litecoin does litecoin look bullish to you no not at all actually looks pretty fucking disgusting in fact the weekly is uh if the weekly if the weekly closes especially below last week's close or sorry this oh jesus christ this is fucking the bitcoin parent sorry irrelevant Take, the, take all of that back. Let's go back on over here. Okay, great. <laughs> Sorry about that. Apologies. Um, Daily looks very, 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 very similar to Bitcoin, actually. Very similar. Um, what about like, even like the lower term timeframes? Mm. Looks a little bit better than Bitcoin in the lower term timeframes, actually. Um, other than that, say, you know, same same ranges essentially apply below 37 and a half problems, probably all the way back down to 34 and, and more <laughs> uh, by the same token. Uh, can play out a range between where it is right now and about forty-one and a half dollars, and doesn't really do anything different. But closing above forty-one and a half dollars, and then extend a move, um, probably up to like forty-five, forty-six bucks. So that'd be a pretty damn big move in the, uh, to uh, to the upside. That that would likely be Bitcoin at about seventy-three to seventy-four hundred as well. Um, Mr. Buterol looks very similar to Bitcoin right here as well. So really, you know, it's really just easier to watch Bitcoin, but uh, death cross is happening as we speak. The death cross will be, conf the death cross is pretty much confirmed already, but it will further, it, it will completely confirm today. Um, so any sort of a daily dollar closure, especially below like 160 is going, is going to get that. We're consolidating on the lows as we get the death cross. I do think that that probably forces price action back down at the 110 range and maybe even beyond. Um, um, other than that, what else do we have? Ripple me nipples. It's, it's the same fucking chart, man. Like I don't, I don't understand why people request charts at all. <laughs> they're all the same thing. They're all the same thing. They're all the same pieces of shit. If Bitcoin, if Bitcoin acts like a piece of shit, they're all gonna act like a piece of shit. If Bitcoin acts like a beautiful angel in disguise, then they're all gonna act like beautiful angels. But for right now, mm, I think it's just easier to watch Bitcoin. Um, I'm not really seeing anything too much different on these charts. So if you know, whichever way brick, Bitcoin breaks up, breaks those ranges, it's gonna be our next big direction. I'm curious what Link is doing. I mean, of course, you know, it'd be naive to say that everything does the same thing as Bitcoin. There's always going to be some outliers, but even Link looks more or less like Bitcoin as well. Um, does look a little bit more bottomy though. Uh, we do have bullish divergence on the daily as well. Um, although I think that that move's likely already played out. Let's see what the weekly looks like. The weekly does not look good to me. Um, let's put let's put on some of these major movement efforts to see. Mm. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of the weekly right here. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm I, I. I don't think it's going to be the dollar in the market right now. Uh, let's go check out gold. I, I didn't check out that one or how we closed on uh, Friday. Um, ugh, fuck me. This one makes it difficult as well. I. I guess I have to be. I guess I have to be biased to 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 more downside opening. But I don't. I. I don't feel all that confident on that. I, I would not trade this one right now. Um, shout out to all the people making shit tons of money on that though. Um, other than that, what's the real hedge? Oh, it looks to me like Dixie's a real hedge. Strange, very strange, but uh, this thing looking very, 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 very well over the long period of time. Uh, monthly has a massive breakout, a multi-decade decade breakout, actually. Probably does pull back a little bit from this region, but long term, I do like it. Um, um, um. What else do we want to talk about? I think that's about it. I think I've talked your ears off by now. Um, let's go back on over here. So I have to wrap this bitch up. Okay, cool. Yeah, this I think this chart gets it gets it pretty well right here. Uh, any sort of a four hour total closure above about sixty six fifty, and we are very likely to test sixty nine fifty after that. Um, and if sixty nine fifty, even if we just trade above sixty nine fifty, I do think that we will see further extension to the upside into like seventy three, seventy four hundred ish region. I think that's quite unlikely. I don't think that that's what's going to happen here. I think I think that probably we we might even retest this region at sixty five fifty, six six fifty ish region right here. But I do think that uh, especially with regards to open interest going back on over here. It looks like distribution to me. Um, and if we get another rejection right there, that's going to be the first uh, uh, piece of the puzzle. The second piece of the puzzle would be closing a four hour dildo below uh, about 6,100 ish region. Or if you want to be a little more conservative, 6050 ish region down here. And then I'll look for a further extension all the way down to uh, 5,700, probably a small bounce there between about 57 or 58. And then I'll look for that to get sold into and bring us all the way down to the weekly 200 simple at about 5550. Um, at which I think we'd have another bounce and probably pro and, and probably move below there to the lower 5,000s. I think that's the more likely thing to happen in this, uh, you know, in this territory. Of course, just going off the weekly closes as we open up this video with, I think that that's probably uh, probably more than enough. 
Um, in fact, I'm curious. I, I, I completely forgot to do this, but uh, I am curious. I'm curious. <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, I am curious, and I'm sure that no one's even listening at this point in time. But I do want to see uh, if, fibs, if fibs line up with anything right here on a closing basis. And what do you know? We did test the 236 on the bearish retrace. Um, we and we we strongly rejected the 382. So bots and algos are still in this area pretty damn hard. Yeah, I, I, I do still feel that Bitcoin moves to the downside here. Can I be wrong on that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I have areas where I will change around my bias. But um, as long as we're below those areas, I will hold on to my current bias. And uh, with all of that said, I want to wish you a nice and healthy start to your uh, Sunday morning over here from a very sunny but um, quarantined Helsinki, Finland. I'll be signing off now. Um, and uh, and again, it's been an it's been an absolute pleasure to speak uh, speaking with you. Whoever's listening at this point in time, you are the true OG of this cave, and uh, and I wish you well. Take care, and until next time.